The Easter by Friedrich Hölderlin. Now come fire, we are impatient to look upon the day and when the trial has passed through the knees. One may perceive the cries in the wood, but as for us, we sing from the Indus, arrived from afar, and from the Alpheus, long we have sought what is fitting, not without wings may one reach out for which is nearest directly, and get to the other side. But here we wish to build, for rivers make arable the land. For when herbs are growing, and to the same in summer, the animals go to drink, there too will humankind go. This one, however, is called the Ista. Beautifully she dwells. The pillars, foliage burns and stirs. Wildly they stand, supporting one another above. A second measure juts out the roof of rocks. No wonder, therefore, I say this river. Invited Hercules, distantly gleaming down by Olympus, when he, too, looked for shadows and came up, up from the sultry isthmus, for full of courage they were in that place but too because of the spirits. There's need of a coolness too. That is why the hero preferred to come here to the wellsprings and yellow banks. Highly fragrant on top and black with fir woods in whose depths a huntsman loves to amble. At noon, and growth is audible in residuous trees of the Easter. Yet almost this river seems to travel backwards, and I think it must come from the east. But much could be said about this. And why does it cling to the mountains straight? The other, the Raina, has gone away, sideways. Not for nothing the rivers flow through dry land, but how? A sign is needed, nothing else, plain and honest, so that sun and moon it may bear in mind inseparable and go away day and night no less and thus the heavenly feel warm one beside the other that also is why these are the joy of the highest for how would he get down and like Hertha, green, they are the children of heaven, but all too patient. He seemed to me not more free and nearly derisive. But for when? Day is due to begin. In youth, where it starts, to grow another already there drives high the splendor, and like foils, 
he grinds the bit, and far off the breezes. Can he hear the commotion? If he is contented, but the rocks need incisions, and the earth needs its furrows, and it would be desolate else, unabiding. Yet what that one does, the river, nobody knows.